need heroes. And dreams without goals come on. are just dreams. Come on. And ultimately, they fuel disappointment. Exactly. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply. This all comes from Pastor Bernard. I just stole it. It sounds familiar. It, yeah, it sounds familiar. <laughs> you must apply discipline. Discipline. Come but on. more importantly, consistency. consistency. Because without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll, you'll never, never finish. finish. Denzel has done things in the movie industries people have dreamed about. If you can learn from his greatness, then you can adopt some of the behaviors that he does to help you and yourself achieve higher levels in what you do. So watch now. Number one, put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things, everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. 40 years ago, March 27th, 1975, it was 40 years ago, uh, just this past March, I was flunking out of college. I had a 1.7 grade point average. I hope none of you can relate. <laughs> I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty shop. They still call it beauty shops now? What they call it? Yeah, I was sitting in the beauty parlor. I was sitting in my mother's beauty parlor and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. And every time she looked up, she, every time I looked up, she was looking at me, just looking me in the eye. I didn't know who she was, and I said, you know, she said, somebody give me a pen, give me a pencil, I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now, mind you, I flunked out of college. I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was going to do, and she's telling me I'm going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world, and I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done and stick with God. I blame no one. I look in the mirror. On the other side of it, what an opportunity we have because tomorrow's the first day of the rest of our lives. So what an opportunity we have to practice what he preached. We were put here for a reason. God created man. And God intends for us to love all mankind. And by being in a loving mood, caring for one another, that's our purpose for life. You've invested a lot in your education and people have invested in you. And let me tell you, the world needs your talents. Man, does it ever. The world needs a lot and we need it from you. We really do. We need it from you young people. I mean, I'm not speaking for the rest of us up here, but I know I'm getting a little grayer. We need it from you, the young people, because remember this. So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your, your, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because remember this, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I'll say it again. You will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. And all they got was robbed. So the question is, what are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. 
Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists, some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love, some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? But we need goals, we need models, we need heroes. And dreams without goals come on. are just dreams. Come on. And ultimately, they fuel disappointment. Exactly. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply. This all comes from Pastor Bernard. I just stole it. It sounds familiar. It, yeah, it sounds familiar. <laughs> you must apply discipline. Discipline, come but on. But more importantly, consistency, consistency. Because without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll, you'll never, never finish. finish. These are all things I learned from you. So the, the position I have, the money I have, the stardom I have, the joy that we're paying or whatever I've given to people through the films that I've done, don't make me any better. Leave room to learn. Fail big. That's right, fail big. Today's the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can be, it can be very frightening. It, it's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about, passionate about. Take chances, professionally. Don't be afraid to fail. There's an old IQ test was nine dots, and you had to draw five lines with a pencil within these nine dots without lifting the pencil. The only way to do it was to go outside the box. So don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. The point is, and I'll pick up the pace. The point is, every graduate here today has the training and the talent to succeed. But do you have the guts to fail? Here's my second point about failure. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. My wife told me this great expression. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Browns, a motivational speaker, he made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential, the ghost of the ideas you never acted on, the ghost of the talents you didn't use, and they're standing around your bed angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? Hard work works. Working really hard is what successful people do. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in <laughs> remember just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done remember that just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done don't confuse movement with progress my mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. 
So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. The one thing I'm the most happy about in terms of my career is the fact that I got there with the grace of God, first of all, but short of that, I got there just by working hard, not partying with the right people, not compromising myself in any way or cutting any kind of deals, just by working hard, just by plugging along, sawing wood as I like to call it. I'm a 20-year overnight sensation. Bruce Lee, you know, studied many martial arts. And he talked, he always said, take what's useful. So I've taken from different styles and you know, my, my youngest daughter, uh, Olivia, is an actress now. She's at NYU. In fact, she just finished her first movie with uh, Lee Daniels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell her that, you know, there is no one discipline, there is no one uh, gospel when it comes to acting. So I, I take a little from this, take a little from that. In fights with other dads and all that, you know, but I love to inspire. I like that. I like seeing people do well. It was so interesting, I ended up becoming an actor because I've never been the out front guy. I just like, I like seeing people do good. You know, society is forcing success down our throat, comparative success down our throat. You know, I don't know if the Bible says it, but it's, it's, it's somewhere it says, in the last days we'll become lovers of ourselves. It's in the Bible. The number one photograph now is a self. Selfie. E. Yeah. So all, we all want to be followed. No, you know, we all want to lead, I should say. We want, we want, we're willing to do anything young ladies and young men, anything to be influential. Yeah, yeah. You know, the universal stems from the specific. Where's your soul? Where's your heart? Where does it start? Do you want credit for it? Or do you want to see the other person do well? It's the most selfish thing I've done in my life is give because of the joy that I get from it. I love it. I don't like it. I love it. You don't pay a lot of attention to reviews and those kind of things? Well, you know, you're always affected by opinion, but the, the, the more opinions there are of you, the, of, of me, the more I, the less I look at them because I just can't live my life based upon what other people think about me. So I can't concern myself too much with what other people think, you know, it's just not healthy. I, I don't think I'll con I could continue to do what I do if I was constantly worrying about what somebody thought about it. I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning, you have to get on your knees to reach them. And while you're down there, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. That's where I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. Get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Brown's a motivational speaker, he made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, 
How many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? When we can learn from people who have achieved great level of success and the phrase stand on shoulders giant. So for example, you've just watched a series of what make this person great. Now, if you adopt these same behaviors, some may work for you, some may not, but the series and other videos that we share will hopefully help you achieve levels of greatness in your life. Adopting behaviors that successful people do will only help you out achieve more. You can take some and you can drop some. You don't have to do them all. Some may work for you, some may not. So uh, hopefully you learn from these behaviors, you start adapting some to your life. I get to create a video about what makes you great in the future. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I appreciate you watching these videos. Thank you.